What is up, Third Shift Chronicles fans? Um, we're in the middle of a fucking crisis in the world, but more specifically in America. Um, and I, I figured I need to give my two cents. I, I did a Facebook Live the other day about the COVID-19, aka coronavirus pandemic and my thoughts on it. And uh, for some reason, I can't download the Facebook video and strip out the audio. I don't know. So I figured I'd recreate it if I possibly could. So um, number one, everybody calm the fuck down. <laughs> Just calm down. I understand shit's going sideways, but trust me, it's going to be okay. Just wash your hands. Don't cough in other people's faces. Don't lick any doorknobs and limit the amount of people you see in the day. It's really that simple. I know everybody's upset. I know people are worried. I know that the, the virus is uh, easily transmittable. I get all that. But let's look at it from a logical perspective. Um, that's kind of how I do everything. My background um, as an Army intelligence analyst, I, I basically decoded stuff um, and analyzed data um, for Army intelligence. Um, so that's kind of where my, my background started. Um, I'm a human behavior expert. I understand how to read body language um, at a high level and understanding human behavior tendencies. And so I'm, I'm pretty good at reading situations. <clears throat> and it's kind of my like hobby is to uh, look at major catastrophes and, and major incidents and try to read between the lines and figure out the truth from a lot of the, the nonsense that's being, being put out there. So let's start with this. It started in China. All right. And we can't, even though the world wants you to, to, to believe you can, you can't compare country to country without taking into account all the, the, the different um, variables that, that make one country different from the other. So the highest concentration of, of coronavirus cases is in China. Let's just look at <clears throat> what the coronavirus is. Coronavirus is a um, flu-like virus that uh, creates a high temperature, upper respiratory, chest um, difficulty breathing, which is really the big one, um, and some you know normal flu-like types of symptoms. <clears throat> just look at China from a non-coronavirus perspective. Every major city in China has one major normal, not normal, but major thing that is similar in all cities in China. Pollution. They are literally, people that live in, in China that live in a metropolitan area are basically living with COPD every single day of their lives. They are breathing in massive amounts of um, pollution into their lungs, which is probably causing them to have a lower level of oxygen in their, in their blood system and their breathing ability is probably less than the average American. With that being a fact, because that is a fact, that's not disputable. The reality is if you introduce an upper respiratory infection into a, a population that is literally struggling to breathe to begin with, you're going to see a higher number of hospital patients, number one, and number two, probably a higher number of people who die because their lungs just aren't prepared to have the secondary stress replaced upon it, which is this virus. <clears throat> so for that, that fact alone, I can't compare the United States to China on any level as far as spreading and then hospitalizations and then death. You just can't compare the two because one has an, an environmental factor that the other one does not. So just take China out of the, the picture. Anything that you're seeing in China is probably a hundred times worse just simply based on the fact that, that it's the environment that is impacting this even more so than the virus. Italy. Italy is the second worst um, impacted country. Um, I have friends that live there <clears throat> that are Italian, that grew up in Italy um, and have lived there from the days when things were good to where they are now, which is Italy as a country is, is essentially bankrupt. It is a very impoverished nation outside of the tourist cities, um, in Rome, Naples, Milan, Florence, um, Venice. 
most of Italy is, is unemployed. Um, so that's number one. If you look at just simple day to day living, people are in a, in a depressed state simply because they are living in an in a environment that is um, lacking motivation, lacking um, activity, lacking movement um, on many levels, simply because they're not getting up and going to work every day. Secondly, you look at the way the healthcare system in Italy is is run. It is socialized medicine in a very bad form of socialized medicine. It's not a highly functioning um, medical system. So when you look at how are people being treated, the types of doctors, nurses, and facilities that are available in Italy, you're looking at government-led, government-controlled medical. And I can promise you that if they can't figure out how to run their economics, they certainly are not going to be very capable of running a medical system. I would say that a lot of the cases of death are a result of the country's inability to handle this type of, of pandemic simply on a numbers level. And then the third factor is if, if you look at Italy as a whole, it's a very um, culturally um, connected group of people. They live in and amongst their family. There's generations of people living in the same building, um, often the same house. <clears throat> so that means there's a lot of um, human interaction, close proximity human interaction, human interaction. So if you add in all the factors, the odds of transmitting this type of disease are higher. And then finally, if you just add in the fact that their borders are porous and anyone and everyone is, is making their way in Italy, you're adding in an external factor that is um, pretty much the, that's the, the, the ringer when you're putting in the ability for people to, to enter and leave without a whole lot of um, tracking that that's adds just adds to the, um, the situation and making it worse. So those two countries are, are anomalies. And I would argue that Iran, which apparently is uh, moving up the charts as far as number of exposures and deaths, um, I don't even need to begin this talk there. It's, it's a third world nation. It used to not be. Iran was a very metropolitan um, type country. It, it was, there was people that would vacation in Tehran, um, but not anymore. <clears throat> Those are factors that you have to take into account. You can't just simply say one plus one equals two and call it what it is. There's so many other variables that come into play. So when, let's talk specifically of America. So we have the single greatest um, medical system, insurance system, um, trade, commerce, um, borders, security, you name it. We are, we are up the top tier country in the world when it comes to all those things. And in our country, there's been 3,000 or so cases of coronavirus. Up until last night, there were 61 deaths. Um, comes out to around 3%. I get it. It's a, the percentage, if everybody's just looking simply at percentage numbers, um, it's a pretty high percentage that are dying. But you have to look inside the numbers and you have to look at um, whether or not the number, you know, 3,100 cases is what is known today. I would argue there's probably 10 times that many people that have actually gotten the coronavirus that didn't have the symptoms or didn't know the symptoms were coronavirus and thought it was more of a flu um, that were carrying it and didn't know it and have gotten healthy again. Um, this has been, I would say, probably since December, early January, that this has been in our country. It's just, it didn't become known on the level it's at now for you know, a month or two after that. <clears throat> so I would argue that there's probably 10 times as many people that have had the coronavirus. Um, and, and even if it's not 10, say it's three times. So say it's 10,000 people. Those 61 deaths then change that percentage to a very low number, which is less than 1%. Just the simple acknowledging that there's probably more than what we know about changes that number. But nobody wants to look at that. They just want to simply say, we know there's 3,100 and there's 61 deaths, so therefore that percentage is rather high. The only number we know is the 61. 61 is a, is a true barometer as to what is happening with the coronavirus in America. 
we don't know the actual number of people that have had it or that currently have it. Um, testing is now being done a little bit more uh, widespread. People that have symptoms are the ones that they're testing. There are people that can be asymptomatic and carry the vi virus and not have a single symptom. I've never had the flu in my entire life, ever. I've never had a flu shot. I don't know why I don't get the flu. I just don't get it. I don't know if that would be the same with the coronavirus. I don't know. I may have the coronavirus. I have no fucking idea. I can tell you I have no symptoms. Doesn't mean I'm not carrying it and transmitting it. I don't know. And there's going to be thousands and thousands of people that have that same situation that don't know that they're a carrier, which is why part of the reason why the government is reacting so aggressively to um, the virus. But when I look at the, the, the aggressive nature of how each state that has uh, cases and the federal government as a whole is, is reacting, I have to look at this from a, um, an analytical mind and sort of from a, I'm questioning some, some motives and, and, and trying to figure out why this would be so much different than any other pandemic that has um, hit our nation in the past. You look at HIV AIDS, you look at SARS, Ebola, swine flu, you name it. <clears throat> there has been a an, an godly number of people with cases and deaths as a result of those. And nothing has ever reached the level of, of I don't want to say hysteria, but pandemonium of, of worry, of reactionary measures um, than we have today. And I have to ask why. What is different today than what happened in the past and how things were handled in the past? The only thing I can think of is that, um, and I had seen it mentioned in the past year or so, how the CDC was not prepared according to government um, findings, that they was not prepared to handle a pandemic um, of, of something uh, that would be worldwide um, and how the United States would potentially be um, at risk. I, we also, there's been a lot of stories written and whether they're true or not, I don't know. Um, about the causation of this outbreak. Was it intentional from China? Was it um, a bio warhead that was released as a test to see how quickly it could spread and what individual nation's um, ability to react to it would be? I mentioned in my Facebook download, in my Facebook Live, that um, in the past when I worked counterterrorism as a federal air marshal, um, there would be flights that we would be on where we knew there was somebody who was affiliated with a known terrorist, whether they were a relative or um, had some association with someone who was on a no-fly list. These people were on a watch list and on people on watch list, air marshals obviously were assigned to those flights. We would know that they were booked on a flight. And a lot of times those people on the watch list would do things called probing, which would for an example, you know, we'd be on a flight across the country and the no seat, the no, the seatbelt light would be on so you couldn't get up and walk freely. Well, people uh, that were on this watch list would get up and do things like pray in the aisle um, during a flight when the seatbelt sign was, was on to see whether or not there were, A, if there were air marshals on the flight, um, B, what the airline industry in general, how they would respond. And if there was air marshal on the flight, could they draw them out of their um, position of cover or concealment um, as undercover agents to address what they were doing? So we knew that this was their tactic and we would not respond because we didn't want to give away any of our ability to um, have a level of surprise if, um, God forbid, there was actually a terrorist attack on a plane. So I would, I would argue that it's not, it wouldn't be uncommon for <clears throat> a nation like China, which, you know, we just slapped the shit out of them with uh, trade tariffs and embargoes and um, we're financially hurting them in the, around the world with um, the, the penalties be placed on them financially, um, that they wouldn't want to strike back. And, you know, before I would argue that you just don't, you don't launch uh, a flesh eating bacteria that kills millions of people uh, without first understanding how the transmission component would, would occur. I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm not. I'm just telling you, when I look at a reaction from an entire country, and the world for that matter, 
why would everybody be so worried about something that has such a low death rate and, and thus far such a low transmission rate? Why would they react this way? And the only thing I can think of is that potentially our government is using this as a way to, to figure out how to handle something if it were to be something completely insane, like a flesh eating bacteria that kills millions of people that was intentionally released as a bio warhead. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if that's the case, if, if our government is treating this as if it was a bio warhead and that we need to get our shit together and figure out how we would react if this were something more severe, then I'm cool with that. I get it. That makes sense to me. Telling me that 61 people in the whole fucking country died from a flu-like virus and this is the response and just saying that's just the reason why, I don't buy that at all. I've seen way worse things on many different levels from terrorism to uh, in my law enforcement career that would justify a reaction like this that never happened. And I can't wrap my head around the fact that this simple virus, because you can call it what you want, but it is really a virus that has a very low um, negative outcome potential to get the entire country to shut down, to ban travel from just about everywhere in the world in the United States, to closing every university, school, uh, liquor stores for Christ's sake, bars and restaurants, any place of mass gathering. If you're shutting it down to the level that they're shutting it down without in, in, enforcing martial law, we are literally a sea hair away from martial law. And that scares me a little bit. That scares me that this would be something that our government would go from zero to a million for simply for what we know to be true, which is it's a flu like virus. So I can't believe that that be, that would be true, that there has to be a secondary um, stimulus or catalyst for this reaction. And the only thing that makes sense to me is that if this were indeed a bio warhead released by China as a test to see how bio warfare could be conducted, and how countries would react, I'm okay with coming up with a plan that we can then utilize later in, in God forbid it ever did happen, if bio warfare agent was released into the world. So I'm cool with it if that's the case, but I can't wrap my head around this being just a reaction to the COVID-19 potential, um, the outbreak potential. So. I'm not saying that that's what this is, but I'm just saying if I'm looking at this from an analytical point of view and I'm trying to come to terms with why my world is literally stopping around me, as a cop, I don't get to call out sick or not go to work. But everyone else is pretty much at home quarantined in their house because the government made them. And I have to be okay with that on some level and understand why the mechanisms, mechanisms behind the decision making to do this. And it's not simply because we're worried about the hospitals being overrun, because I don't think that would happen. The, I, I don't know the numbers of the 3,100 known cases, how many were hospitalized, but I would probably tell you it's pretty low. And based on all the other things that are out there, AIDS, the fucking flu virus, for Christ's sake, that kills 50, 60,000 people a year in the United States, those people were probably in the hospital at some point in time. I always said it's, it's like adding a thimble full of water into the ocean. You're not changing the 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 dynamic of the ocean by doing that. And right now that's what this is. We have a thimble full of, of cases that require medical attention in, in a hospital from the, H1, from the uh, coronavirus. So I can't jump to the, from A, going from zero to a billion and say that that makes sense. So that's just my take on this. I think that there is some underlying secondary catalyst, probably from a CDC response level, um, capability and having a plan in place that our president and thank God he's he's our president because he's he's reaching out into the private sector and saying let listen let's work together with private sector which is brilliant when you allow the government to just control everything you end up like Italy just leave it at that I'm glad that our president sees the value of of reaching out the private sector and saying let's solve this together you know getting the the the, the private um, testing manufacturers that create these tests and, and create antibodies in the, the medical world, you know, the, the Rhone Polnick, Roar people and the Smith Kleins and the, 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 those all together so that we can figure out a way to handle this if it were to ever become something that 
truly requires our nation to go to this level. Um, I'm okay with it then. But that's ultimately what I think happened here. So I just wanted to put this out there. I know it's not your typical Third Ship Chronicles, but it's in my head, and I figured I'd share it with you guys. Um, but that's it. Everybody just calm the fuck down. Don't buy all the toilet paper and the hand wipes and the sanitizer and fuck everyone else over. Buy what you need. Don't change anything. The grocery stores are going to restock. Now, the liquor stores are closed. I, would, I do recommend you go out and buy some Tito's if you need it. But um, otherwise, just sort of be nice, be kind, don't be a dick. That's kind of like my three things in life that I try to adhere to. And I uh, highly would recommend you guys follow that as well. So thank you, everybody. God bless. Have a great week. If your family's home, if you have kids like mine in college, be happy they're home and under your roof. Uh, love on them. Be happy you're just, you had a chance, whether it was planned or not, to just all be together and, and sort of love and, and share and, and that connectivity with, with the ones you love. All right? God bless. Take care. Peace.